Okay, uh, here's a quick quick demo of uh, using Houdini to create a digital asset for Unreal. Um, and as a huge disclaimer, I'm still definitely at the learning Houdini stage, um, so bear with me. Uh, apologies in advance for any errors or anything. So the context for this, or the, the tool, I, I kind of, is the following. I have a, um, a really low poly, um, you can see it's two triangles, a low poly mesh, which has this really cool vertex blended material on it. And uh, for those of you that have vertex painted, um, as you probably know, uh, because it's such low density, when I try to vertex paint it, um, it doesn't really quite have the effect that I'm going for. Like you can see that the, the fact that it's height blended helps immensely, right? So it kind of does this nice thing. But it's still, I, I don't, I can't just create a little splotch of you know dirt or no dirt, um, and that's because the vertex density is, is, is so small. So what I would love to have uh, as I'm building my level is the ability to kind of add additional geometry, you know, create more vertices to this mesh, primarily just because I want a vertex paint. So now, now this is obviously the opposite of what you usually want to do with game development, right? You want lower poly. Um, but in this case, I, I've been actually using this, this mesh tool, which is, should be a different video, but it lets me really quickly block out some low poly geometry that's uh, pretty good for a dungeon but it's too low poly to vertex paint and it's too tedious to try to you know, manually insert edge loops um, or uh, and of course you could always export to Maya or Max and add more geometry there and then re-import it but that's just so slow and annoying so it turns out that this is a super easy thing for Houdini to do so let, let's let's whip up a tool in Houdini it's, it's literally going to take us a second um, so if, if we had a box in Houdini Let's just lay down a new box here in the center of the world. Um, we can go in and uh, inside of here we can actually edit the geometry. They have a bunch of tools like uh, let's look at like just as an example we'll put down a bevel tool and you can see uh, when we move this little blue tag it's, it's what we're looking at so in this case you know we can bevel it uh, that's great. Um, what we want to do for, uh, for our tool though is really subdivide right so let's lay down a subdivide node. And you'll notice once we wire that in and move to that, uh, by default it's doing a Catmull Clark subdivision. I think, the, um, and the depth is one, and and we can increase the subdivision by sliding the slider. And this does the standard uh, thing that a subdivision does is it kind of um, uh, turns it into a, an averaged shape, right? But it, we don't really want that for what we're messing with, right? We want to hold that original cube shape. So there is this uh, crease, override crease weight. And if we slide that way up, you can see it actually holds our shape. So as we just divide higher, right, we get more density and it keeps our shape. And um, one other th incidental thing that, uh, that I've encountered that I'll just do ahead of time for you now is uh, the geometry that Unreal is going to be feeding to this tool is already triangulated and triangulated geometry when it capital clock is applied to it doesn't really look as good in terms of uniform I, I won't bother showing you it but um, it turns out there's an additional subdividing method here called open subdiv loop and, and we can actually expose this as a parameter in fact let's let's do that now to our tool so um, if if we pick the, the, the two nodes that we want to create as our tool, because really we could feed this tool any geometry, right? So the box is, itself is just geometry coming in. We want to create a tool out of these, these two nodes. So if we come up here and we say new digital asset, and I'll call this uh, sub D demo two. Don't let me forget that name because I, I've gone through this once before and I'm correcting some issues. Um, so if we create this tool, this gives us an opportunity to expose some parameters here. So if we come in here, um, like we talked about the depth, right? I can drag depth over and expose that as a parameter so I can edit it within Unreal. Let's pull over this uh, override crease weight, maybe the crease weight itself. And finally, let's just do this algorithm uh, that we've got. So these are parameters now that we can actually tweak in Unreal and experiment with. So uh, if we hit accept, boom, that actually we're done. That, that's how easy it is to create the tool. But let's test it in a Houdini real quick before we test it on Unreal. So if I turn off this box, we could create another 
let's just do another test box and drag it over to the side here. This is box object two. And in Houdini, we can actually reference that asset as a member, my, or sub D demo two. So we'll wire that up and when we connect it and give it a look, you can see, um, remember the box comes in because the blue flag here, it comes in at lower density and then it becomes this higher density um, subdivision. And if we go even higher, right, we can go as high as we want. Um, so let, that's it. It seems like it's working. Let's try it in Unreal. So uh, if we go back up, let's make sure it's saved. Um, We'll unlock it, we'll save it, and I think it should be there. So we have this empty folder here, and if I import um, that H, so it's sub D demo 2, and we'll pull that in, and boom, we have it. If you drag it into your scene, you'll get this funny looking Houdini logo, um, and it's expecting the sub network input 1 is what they're calling it. We could have named it better, but this is looking for the geometry one we want. So let's uh, let's jump back to this geometry, which was SM plane two, and we'll feed that to Houdini, and boom, magically. Uh, let me drag this over here so we can kind of get a better view of it. It's already done it, uh, amazingly enough. So let's let's look at it. So if we go wireframe, you can see instead of the two, it's got uh, more density, and it's also got um, all these other parameters. Like if we update it to three, uh, when we change it, we need to hit this rebuild asset tool and then that'll recreate it. You can see it's now higher density, uh, just what we wanted. And then uh, we can actually cook this or, or basically bake it out into a, a, an existing asset. So let's just say we want to put this in the A Houdini demo folder and we'll call it um, demo2 result. And if we hit bake, um, I think I hit bake there. If we hit bake, oh, I have to jump over here to the folder. You can see demo2 result is there. If we open it up and look at it in wireframe, you can see it's high density. And then, of course, most importantly, let's uh, test it out real quick. If we pull this out into the world, uh, maybe let's orient it so it's a little better. Make it a little bigger. Uh, and we'll apply this material to it, right? We've got our magical uh, blended material. And if we pick um, our vertex painter, you can see now when we're painting, we can actually paint much, much lower density, right? And when we look at it um, here, it's letting us paint now much smaller. So. Um, again, it's kind of funny for game development that I wanted more polygons, but for vertex painting, you know, you, you really do. And, uh, you know, at the big picture, I think this is a great illustration of a really simple Houdini tool that you can leverage. You know, uh, Houdini's running, they call it Houdini Engine, it's running inside of Unreal. And anything we do in that graph, you know, you can do here. And you have uh, inputs and outputs. It's kind of an amazing, amazing piece and a great, easy way to really start. Uh, leveraging Houdini inside of Unreal at edit time. Anyway, that, uh, that about wraps it up, and uh, I'll be sure to try to post more videos uh, as I make more progress.